I have loaded on this bad boy so much fan fiction. Hey guys, it's Michaela back again with another video and this time uh, I'm talking about something that I have never talked about on my channel before. If you are at all familiar with Goodreads, you have probably seen reviews for books that begin with something along the lines of Thank you to NetGalley for providing me an early access copy of this book to review. All opinions are my own. I have probably seen some version of that sentence 8 billion times uh, in my tenure on Goodreads. And if you've been on this channel before, you know that I love ARCs. I love reading advanced copies of books. I love being able to read something before it comes out and then give uh, my opinion on it so I can, you know, help other people make a decision about what their purchasing or library decisions are going to be. But I just never was really interested in checking NetGalley out, primarily because I don't really like reading ebooks. I, my eyes get strained. I don't have one of the Amazon Kindles or any of the e-readers that sort of are supposed to look like actual ink on paper. I only have a Kindle Fire, which is a like backlit screen or a phone or a computer to read on. So I was never interested, but I, so I don't know what happened. A couple, like a week ago, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to check out NetGalley. I'm going to see what that's all about. And so that is exactly what I have done. And I want to talk about it. So just a quick like introduction as to what NetGalley is. It's an online repository of ebooks and audiobooks for titles that have yet to be released. Anyone can sign up to be a NetGalley reviewer, which means that they receive an ARC, an advanced reader copy to read and then review for a publisher. So what was the process for me for getting into NetGalley? The first thing you have to do is create an account. Part of the process of creating your account is Choosing the genres and age ranges that you like to read, these choices that you make become your categories for the books that NetGalley might recommend to you. But as far as I can tell, nothing stops you from requesting titles to read outside of your established categories. You also have the opportunity to link your Goodreads, uh, book blog, booktube channel, or any other platform where you might talk about books. I have a Goodreads and obviously this booktube channel, so I put both, but I don't know what happens if you don't have a platform. Once your account has been created, you can just search the database for books that you might be interested in. You can click on the book, you can read the description, and then decide then if that's something you would want to read. Once you decide that you want to read a book, you have to request to read it, and then the publisher decides whether or not you get access to the title. So far, I have only been rejected from reading one title, and I wasn't given a specific reason as to why, but some of the possible reasons were that they had already like hit their maximum for the number of like titles they could give out or that I did not have enough credentials in my profile to like warrant their presence basically. But there are some books that don't even require approval like it just says start reading you can start reading right away. Once you have been approved to read a book you then have several options for how you would like to read it. So what is the reading process like? For me this is when it actually got interesting the actual reading of the book. So the first book that I wanted to test out was a middle grade graphic novel called Living with Viola, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Like I said before, I have this old, old, absolutely ancient Kindle Fire that I wanted to read it on. So this is what I tried first. In order to read on a Kindle, you have to enter on NetGalley your Kindle email address, which is apparently a thing that you have. And then you send the doc from NetGalley to your Kindle. And you have to be um, on the uh, on Wi Fi or internet to do that. These books NetGalley books show up on your Kindle as docs, not as ebooks. I do remember trying to read proper ebooks, some ebook or another on my Kindle back when I was in high school, and I like deeply hated the experience. Um, it was just not user friendly at all. I hated that like I could only read in landscape mode couldn't read in portrait. And the pages did not feel like pages and the entire concept of like trying to figure out where I am in a book by location instead of by page was a fucking nightmare. Like I, I immediately gave up. However, I was actually pretty optimistic about this NetGalley process because I did read a lot of documents on my Kindle back in high school uh, because I have loaded on this bad boy so much fan fiction, so many fan fiction PDFs. Like you could not even believe how many are on here. Going through them again, uh, just in like in the middle of this whole process, just like flipping through all of these fan fictions that I read when I was like 16, 17, 18, 19 uh, was a trip and a half. Let me tell you that. That being said, my optimism was not warranted because reading this book was not good. Not the book, 
the reading of it, like the actual reading of it on the Kindle, was not a great experience. Like I said, the book I chose was a graphic novel, and from the first page, things were not going well. The images were cut or very weirdly proportioned and placed on the page. The text that was supposed to be in text bubbles was not. It was all over the place. It was and firmly, firmly unreadable, I immediately gave up. So I abandoned the Kindle and I decided instead to read through the NetGalley app on my phone, on which I am currently recording, so I cannot show it to you. I don't have an iPad or any kind of tablet, so my only choices for reading were my phone or a computer, and I just chose to go with my phone because of the, I was at my desk and that was just what I chose. So the NetGalley app itself does not suck. The reviews on the Apple App Store aren't great, but most of the complaints when I was uh, flipping through them were about the audiobook portion of the app because in order to listen to an audiobook through NetGalley, the only way to listen to that audiobook is through the NetGalley app. You do not have any other options. And apparently that portion of things is not good. Apparently that does not work very well at all, but that is not what I was doing so I can't really comment on that. As far as like digital copies of the books go, I found this app pretty easy to navigate. You have your recently read at the top and then all of your approved titles at the bottom and when you want to start reading you just tap on the book, download it, which did not take me very long at all, like maybe a minute to download a book, and then you can just open the document. The pages of the document are pretty much just like actual pages. It's sort of like a PDF that you can't edit in any way. You can zoom in, which is great because I was reading on my phone, so needed that. The only thing that I thought was weird about this title in particular was that sometimes the text in the text bubbles or the, the, the dialogue bubbles didn't seem like it fit, not physically, but like aesthetically. It felt almost like someone had taken a text box, like like on a, a photo editing service and placed that text box over the speech bubble and then just typed something in and just like the default font. It felt a little weird. It didn't feel right. But I don't know if that's how it actually looks in the book or if that's just how it had to be formatted for this galley. I don't know. I did, just to check, open up a different title that was not a graphic novel, just like a regular schmegular novel, and flip through a few pages and all of the text looked totally fine and normal there. So this might be an issue with graphic novels. The images for the, the graphic novel, as I read it through the NetGalley app, totally fine. All of the pages looked great. It was just like a weird issue with some text bubbles. So it could just be a formatting thing. I don't know. The only real issue I had uh, with the actual reading of it was as you know, I'm scrolling from one page to the next, every once in a while, it would skip down to the page after the one that I was trying to go to. And it took me several tries to get it to stop skipping and to actually go back up to the page I wanted to read. Um, it was a little annoying. I mean, it didn't happen every time. Um, and I found that I just had to scroll when I was scrolling through pages go very, very slowly. And that seemed to prevent it from happening. So don't try to like whip through pages because apparently it freaks out. But other than that, this really was a super easy reading experience. So now I want to talk about the book itself and I will put the cover of that book somewhere over here. Uh, the book was Living with Viola by Rosanna Fung. This is a middle grade graphic novel about this girl named Libby who is in the sixth grade and starting out at a new school and as she is navigating this new school and sort of reestablishing herself and making new friends she is haunted by her thoughts and her thoughts are depicted as this sort of like ghostly alter ego named Viola. Viola is all of Livy's negative self-talk about how she no one really likes her and she'll always be a disappointment and she'll never make any friends like things like that. Livy tries to ignore Viola and when that doesn't work she tries to start like fighting off Viola on her own and that doesn't really work either and so Livy starts to spiral. There are a lot of different aspects of Livy's life that come into play. She is the child of Chinese immigrants who have um, immigrated to Canada and she's sort of caught in these crossroads of loving her Chinese household and wanting to fit in in her Canadian like school environment. She loves art and drawing but is feeling pressured by her extended Chinese family to pursue things that are more practical, uh, particularly like a, pursue a career like law or medicine. She really wants to make friends with um, some really outgoing and popular uh, Canadian girls, but she finds herself having more in common with a quieter, shyer Chinese girl who is also of Chinese descent. 
This book is not only about Libby figuring out what she wants and what makes her happy, but also learning to live with Viola's voice in her head. Not to give away the ending, but Livy is eventually diagnosed with a panic and anxiety disorder and is able to start getting help for the harder things in life. I think this book is a really excellent depiction of a particular mental health struggle for that middle grade audience. I don't think that this book ever attempts to over explain or talk down to that audience. Instead, Livy's experience gets to unfold on the page very naturally and as someone who has you know lived with a lot of negative self-talk i found Livy's experience like very accurate and identifiable. I really appreciated the way that Livy's parents are depicted in the story. They are both immigrants from China but they strike a really lovely balance between having some more like traditional expectations for her while also recognizing when she needs help and how they are able to support her as she grows into her own person. They very clearly love their daughter and while they are not perfect, they do what they can to get her the help that she just needs and to provide her with the loving home environment that she deserves. Libby's relationship with her friend group is also very interesting. There are four girls and each of them are extremely unique and different from each other. They all have their own wants and goals and flaws and the way that they have to learn how to like navigate each other reminds me so much of my own middle school experience. I find that adults very often fail to really capture the specific idiosyncrasies of like middle school girl friendships. They're so unique and so specific and I just feel like they can't really get it down but Rosanna Fung really nails it. I can't comment on this specifically as a white person but I also think the way that Livy's Chinese heritage bumps up against her Canadian life was handled really well. Her experiences match a lot of those that I've heard from other children of Asian descent. All of the things that she feels and like the decisions that she makes feel accurate to who she is and what her life looks like. Overall, I think this is an excellent book to recommend to the middle grade kids in your life, particularly young girls and kids from immigrant families. I mean, I felt seen by this book and I'm a 26 year old white lady, so I feel like it's pretty universal. I hope this book encourages kids to ask for help when their own violas start making their lives difficult. I give this book five stars. So. In conclusion, what do I think about NetGalley? Now that I have read and reviewed one book through NetGalley, I definitely plan to continue doing that. Now the expectation for getting approved for a book through NetGalley is that you will read it and then review it. When you get approved for a book, you get an email from the publisher with some like instructions for what they want for the review. I don't remember what the specific requests were for living with Viola, but I know that I don't plan on making any changes to the way that I read or review books. I do not have a book review blog. I don't re write reviews for Goodreads anymore. I do post links of my reviews and wrap-ups to Goodreads and I will definitely like continue to do that but if there are publishers who like aren't happy with the fact that I do video reviews instead of written reviews I don't really care. I do like NetGalley though. I don't think it's particularly difficult to get approved for books to read. I do wish that the Kindle documents worked better, but that's obviously a problem I think with Kindle and not with NetGalley. I'd rather not read on my phone or computer, but I mean, maybe someday I will get an iPad. Probably not though, because they're like dummy expensive. Okay, that is all I have for you guys today. Um, let me know if you have your own experience with uh, NetGalley. I don't think I know anybody personally who has ever used the service before. So if you have used it, let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you have found a better way of reading than like on your phone. Um, I think there was like one other option that I didn't try and I don't know what it was. I can't remember right now. But yeah, let me know what your experience was or if you are interested in trying it out now. I don't know what happens if you like sign up for these books to read them but then you never review them or talk about them i don't know if like you get penalized i don't i don't i really don't know but if you're looking for books to read they are there i'm just saying okay that is all i have for you guys today thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one okay bye